Hello, my name is Philip Mons. I'm a professor of healthcare and nursing science at the universities of Leuven, Belgium, Gothenburg in Sweden, and Cape Town in South Africa. I'm pleased to present uh, this uh, presentation here at ESC Congress 2020, The Digital Experience. And the presentation is entitled, How to Assess Quality of Life in Cardiac Patients to Follow Outcomes of Care. This is um, a picture that we are all familiar with. And indeed, sometimes we have good news for our patients. We can tell them that all the tests were negative and everything is perfectly all right. However, this is not always corresponding to the situation of the patient. Indeed, patients may experience a lot of impediments. I cannot eat, exercise, or sleep. This discordance has to, can be um, evaluated by using patient-reported outcomes. And patient-reported outcomes, um, here you see some examples, have to do with quality of life, symptoms of the patients, functional status, and adherence to treatment, to name some examples. Patient-reported outcomes can be measured using patient-reported outcome measures, and uh, that is also known as the PROMS. In addition to the PROMS, we also have the PREMS, the Patient Reported Experience Measure. And this has to do with how patients experience the care that they are, they are receiving. The title of this presentation is on quality of life. And indeed, quality of life is one particular patient reported outcome. And let me dig into a little bit deeper. A few years ago, I evaluated the uh, medical and healthcare literature and looked at the different conceptual approaches of quality of life um, in medical and healthcare literature. And I identified eight different approaches, being normal life, social utility, utility, happiness and effect, satisfaction with life, satisfaction with specific domains, achievement of personal goals, and the natural capacity. Of course, depending on the conceptualization used, you will end up with different findings. It would lead us too far to dig into all these eight um, different conceptual approaches, but based on a conceptual evaluation, I found that satisfaction with life seems to be the most an appropriate conceptualization of quality of life. Some people among you may know that I'm mainly working in congenital heart disease. And interestingly enough, in 2015, two review articles were published on quality of life in congenital heart disease. And one review article found, we have shown that quality of life in adolescents and young adults with congenital heart disease is not reduced when compared with age-matched controls. Another review article published in the same year concluded, the results of this study suggest that quality of life is impaired in moderate or complex congenital heart disease, while no such impact of, congen of, quality of, of uh, congenital heart disease on quality of life could be established in simple defects. This is clearly an um, conflicting findings. And the question is, how comes? Well, when you look at how quality of life was measured in these review articles, then you could see that the latter review uh, used only articles in which quality of life was measured from a functional approach. Uh, and not only physical functioning, also emotional and social function. Whereas the first uh, review article included studies that um, evaluated quality of life using one single index measure. And they also included studies that looked uh, upon quality of life from a more holistic point of view. Of course, when you're using different instruments, you end up with different findings. And instruments that measure quality of life from a holistic point of view, examples are satisfaction with life scale, linear analog scale, and so on. 
examples from quality of life from a functional point of view are SF36, Minnesota Living with Heart Failure Questionnaire, and many other generic and disease-specific questionnaires. The question then is, um, what assessment should I look for? And this model can help you in this matter. It's a model of Wilson and Cleary, and it tried to explain how quality of life is influenced by other factors. Indeed, if you are interested in a holistic perspective on quality of life, then it is advocated that you have to look at uh, overall quality of life. And in such a way, you can use a satisfaction with life scale or a linear analog scale. However, when you are more interested in the functioning of the patient, well, then it is better to use uh, instruments that are measuring the functioning, the physical functioning, emotional and social functioning of the patient. However, bear in mind that you are then measuring factors that are more related to the general health perception and the functional status of the patients rather than the overall quality of life. And I would go a step further. If you are interested in symptoms of the patient, well, measure the symptoms because that is most uh, proximal to your variables of interest instead of quality of life, which is rather distal as this model indeed shows. In other words, the choice of your instruments should be as proximal to your variables of interest uh, in order to uh, yield relevant results for your own study. This year, I evaluated um, the methodological and conceptual rigor of quality of life studies that were published in the European Journal of Cardiovascular Nursing. Because, as I told you, there are different definitions and conceptualizations, and that is a problem. We found here that um, only 20% of the studies have provided a definition of quality of life which means 80% did not. 28% provided the domains that were measured as components of quality of life, which means that more than 70% did not. And this is all problematic. We need really, uh, we need investigators to report all these factors uh, to make sure that we as a reader can understand what investigators have done and how they have approached quality of life. The good thing, however, is when you compare these proportions with the general medical and healthcare research, studies in the European Journal of Cardiovascular Nursing were doing better. But still, there is room for improvement. Let me come to the conclusion. First, quality of life is indeed a specific patient reported outcome. That is the ultimate goal of healthcare, as you could derive from the model of Wilson and Cleary. There are different definitions and conceptualizations of quality of life, and that is a problem. And this forces us to make sure that we clarify what we mean with quality of life if we are doing studies on quality of life. Choose outcomes that are most proximal to your interventions. And quality of life in many ways, or in many cases, will be too distal from what your, your main variables of interest will be. And finally, if you are doing quality of life uh, research, make sure that you account for the criteria of methodological and conceptual rigor. Thank you very much. <laughs>